All right, so here's the thing about tech companies and their design choices. Sometimes they make decisions that just, they don't make sense until you really dig into what they're actually trying to accomplish. And right now, we've got this fascinating situation where Google and Apple have gone in completely opposite directions with their latest UI overhauls. Before we dive into this, if you're the kind of person who gets excited about design decisions that might completely change how we use our phones, you're probably going to want to stick around for this entire breakdown. And hey, if you find this stuff as interesting as I do, hit that subscribe button because we're going to be covering a lot more of these tech deep dives. Google's got Material 3 Expressive, Apple's pushing liquid glass, and honestly, the more I've been using both of these in beta, the more I realize we're watching two companies bet their entire futures on fundamentally different ideas about what a phone should feel like. Let me start with what's actually happening here, because the story is wild. So Google spent the last year doing something they basically never do. They actually listened to users, like really listened. They ran studies with over 18,000 people, which is insane when you think about it. Google went full academic on this thing. What they found was pretty interesting. People wanted their phones to feel more human, more personal. The whole flat design era, which, let's be honest, we've been living in for like a decade now. People are getting tired of it. Everything looks the same. Your weather app looks like your messaging app. It's boring. So Material 3 Expressive is basically Google saying, okay, let's make phones fun again. They're bringing back personality, but not in a way that makes you want to throw your device across the room. The animations have this bouncy quality. It's hard to describe until you feel it. When you dismiss a notification, the other notifications kind of react to it. And there's this subtle haptic feedback that just feels right. Apple looked at the same problem and decided to go completely nuclear. Liquid glass isn't an evolution. It's a complete overhaul of how your phone looks. The entire system is based around this idea that your phone's interface should feel like manipulating actual glass objects. The UI elements have refraction. They respond to lighting changes when you tilt your phone. It's either genius or completely insane. I'm still not sure which. The technical implementation is fascinating, though. Apple built this entire physics-based rendering engine where every button, every menu, every piece of the interface is treated like a physical object with mass and material properties. Your phone is tracking virtual light sources and calculating how that light would bounce off these glass surfaces in real time. I mean, think about that for a second. Your phone is essentially running a miniature version of Pixar's rendering software just to show you a settings menu. Meanwhile, Google's approach is way more practical. They took their existing material use system and just made it more expressive. Variable fonts that can stretch and compress, color palettes that give you actual control, animations that feel bouncy and alive without being distracting. And you know what? Both approaches have their pros and cons. Google's biggest issue is one they've never been able to solve. They can't actually control their platform. They can design the most beautiful, user-friendly interface in the world, but Samsung's going to slap one UI on top of it. OnePlus is going to do their own thing. Third-party developers are going to ignore the guidelines completely. So what happens is you get this fragmented experience where Material 3 Expressive exists in these little pockets. Google's own apps, Pixel phones, maybe a few apps from developers who actually care about design consistency. But the moment you step outside that ecosystem, it all falls apart. It's like Google is trying to conduct an orchestra, but half the musicians are playing different songs, and the other half aren't even looking at the conductor. Apple doesn't have that problem. When Apple says this is how interfaces work now, developers fall in line. They have to. It's not optional. So Liquid Glass, for better or worse, is going to be everywhere on iOS. Every app, every system interface, everything is going to follow this new visual language. Which brings us to Apple's problem. And it's a big one. Liquid Glass, in its current form, is basically unusable. Reports have been circulating that there are times when people literally cannot read text on the screen because of the transparency effects. The refraction makes icons blur together. The dynamic lighting changes can make buttons disappear against certain backgrounds. It's like Apple took their accessibility guidelines and set them on fire. The beta forums are, they're not happy. People are calling it an accessibility nightmare. And they're not wrong. I found one post that just said, and I quote, I feel like I need glasses to use my phone now. And I already wear glasses. That's, that's not great, Apple. But here's the thing, and this is where it gets complicated. Apple might be playing a longer game here. See, liquid glass makes perfect sense if you think about it in the context of spatial computing. 
On the Vision Pro, this design language is actually pretty brilliant. When you're working in 3D space, having interface elements that behave like physical objects with realistic lighting and depth, that's intuitive. It maps to how we understand the physical world. The problem is they're trying to force that same paradigm onto flat screens, and it just doesn't work, yet. I think Apple is betting that we're going to transition to AR glasses sooner than most people expect. And when that happens, liquid glass is going to feel natural and obvious. But right now, on a phone screen, it feels like a solution looking for a problem. Google's taking the opposite approach. They're perfecting the 2D interface paradigm. Material 3 Expressive is probably the best flat design system anyone has ever created. It's more usable, more accessible, more personalizable than anything that came before it. So which one is better? Depends on what you value. If you want a phone that works well today, that's accessible, that respects your time and attention, Material 3 Expressive wins by a landslide. It's thoughtful, user-friendly, and it solves real problems without creating new ones. If you want a glimpse of what interfaces might look like in five years, Liquid Glass is fascinating. It's broken in service of something genuinely ambitious. The thing is, I don't think this is really a competition between equals. Google is optimizing for today. Apple is betting on tomorrow. And historically, that's usually been a winning strategy for Apple, even when the initial implementation is rough. Remember when everyone hated the original iPhone keyboard because it didn't have physical buttons? Or when people said removing the headphone jack was stupid? Apple has a track record of being right about the future, even when they're wrong about the present. Google's playing it safer, but safe doesn't always win in tech. The best 2D interface in the world doesn't matter if 2D interfaces become irrelevant. What I find most interesting is how this reflects the deeper differences between these companies. Google is still fundamentally an engineering company. They see a problem, they research it, they build a solution based on data. Apple is still fundamentally a design company. They have a vision of the future, and they're willing to break things to get there. Both approaches have merit. Both have serious flaws. The user testing data is fascinating too. Google's internal studies show that people can find UI elements up to four times faster with Material 3 Expressive compared to previous versions. Apple's internal testing. Well, they haven't released any usability data for liquid glass, which tells you everything you need to know. If I had to bet on which one succeeds long-term, I'd probably go with Apple, but only because they have the ecosystem control to actually implement their vision. Google's ideas are better, but ideas don't matter if you can't execute them consistently. The real winner here might be users, eventually. Google's approach will push Apple to care more about usability and accessibility. Apple's approach will push Google to be more ambitious and forward-thinking. Competition is good, even when both companies are making decisions that seem completely insane from the outside. There's also the business angle we haven't talked about. Google makes money from ads and data collection. A more personalized, expressive interface that keeps people engaged with their devices longer is good for business. Apple makes money from hardware sales and services, a premium futuristic interface that makes their devices feel more valuable and cutting edge, supports their pricing strategy. So in some ways, both companies are designing interfaces that serve their business interests, not just user interests, which is not surprising, but worth acknowledging. We're basically watching two different philosophies about the future of computing play out in real time. And honestly, I have no idea which one is right but I'm excited to find out. The early adoption numbers are interesting too. Pixel phones with Material 3 Expressive are seeing higher user satisfaction scores in Google surveys. But iPhone users are, well, they're complaining loudly on social media, but they're not switching to Android in meaningful numbers yet. Brand loyalty is a hell of a drug. I think the next six months are going to be crucial. Apple will either double down and try to convince everyone that liquid glass is the future, or they'll quietly walk back some of the more extreme elements. Google will continue to perfect Material 3 Expressive, but they'll still face the same fragmentation challenges they always have. The developer community is going to be the real battleground here. If developers embrace one approach over the other, that could determine which philosophy wins out in the long run. So what do you think? Are you team Google with their user-friendly, research-backed approach? Or are you willing to put up with Apple's current usability issues for the promise of a more ambitious future? Have you tried either of these interfaces in beta? I'm genuinely curious about your experiences because mine have been, let's just say educational. Drop a comment and let me know which direction you think makes more sense. And if this kind of tech analysis is your thing, make sure to like this video and subscribe because we're going to be diving deep into a lot more of these design decisions as they roll out. Trust me, this is just the beginning of what's going to be a really interesting year for mobile interfaces.
I'm also planning follow-up videos on the specific technical implementations of both systems, the accessibility implications, and probably a user testing comparison once I can get more people to try both interfaces. So definitely subscribe if you want to see how this story develops. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.